All right, hey guys, we're um, not live because we didn't know if this was gonna work live. And so you're getting a recorded video, but it'll probably be about live quality. So um, Kira LaFosse Baker, I am one of the educators at New England Base Camp and bringing you your daily den meeting today um, with what we think is gonna be a pretty cool uh, activity that you can do at home with very simple things. And I have, um, I have my helper here today. Uh, he's not as young as some of my other, um, my other colleagues helpers. This is not the helper. This is, he's not going to be helpful at all. In fact, that's George. That's my helper. Yeah. He's going to kill me. Uh, yeah. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Craig Heiser. I, um, I am Kira's husband. Okay. okay. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> and I've been, in, I was an Eagle Scout in 2004. So I've brought a really reputable source here to help me with this. So today we're going to be making a camera obscura, which some of you might have done a pinhole camera with like a cardboard box or a shoe box or something. It's the same concept except bigger and you can do it in an entire room. So we're gonna turn this room, which is kind of under construction, which is why it doesn't have any trim, um, this room into a giant, the inside of a camera basically. Um, and I did find out uh, that camera, uh, comes from Latin and it means large vaulted room and obscura means like blackened out. So camera obscura, pretty perfect. We're gonna blacken out this room. I find it fascinating that it's the word camera comes from large vaulted room because the camera I'm filming on, filming on right now does not feel like a large vaulted room. So um, I'm gonna stop this part and go to hopefully a much faster version of us setting up this camera obscura and then we'll come back to explain what's happening. All right. Also quickly, just showing you the materials that we have to get this done. Like I said, this room, ideally you want a room with only one window, but um, this is our emptiest room. Um, so we're gonna go with two windows. Uh, you need something to black out the light, all the light in the room. So we're gonna be using these construction trash bags for one window. Um, you could use those for both and then just cut a tiny hole. And then we're gonna use this um, big cardboard, piece of cardboard to blot out the other window. Um, so you could use anything like that that blackens it out. We've got some tacks here so that you can um, put up your plastic or your cardboard, some duct tape, scissors to cut things out. And then we're going to be using these manila envelopes um, to try different apertures. So different size holes for the kind of pinhole part of the camera to see what gives us the best image on the wall. Okay, so we put up our black construction bag, we put up our cardboard, we're gonna try to seal up some more of the light on that cardboard if we have to, um, cause it's supposed to be pretty black in here, pretty pitch black, so much you're supposed to let your eyes adjust once you do this. So the next step, um, you can just cut a hole in your plastic bag or your cardboard, um, but we're going to try different apertures. So Craig is over here trying to figure that out. All right, so what we got? Yeah, so uh, we cut a hole in the cardboard, um, and like Kira said, you can just punch a hole in the cardboard if you wanted, but we wanted to try different sized aperture holes to try and vary the uh, results of the effects. Um, I think the larger aperture, the more light we'll get in, but it might not necessarily be as focused, um, so a smaller hole might give a, a better image on the walls. So anyways, cutting the hole in the cardboard and then 
putting our aperture in either manila envelopes, which are somewhat translucent, or just cardboard itself will let us uh, kind of try different things. So first uh, aperture size I'm gonna try was just a ballpoint pen stuck through. Um, we'll see how, we'll see how that works. Cool. All right, so we did it, you guys. This is, um, it's really cool. But uh, the camera on my phone taking video is not quite good enough for you to be able to see anything that we did. You might be able to see me. I don't know if you can actually even see me right now. So um, it looks really awesome in here. You definitely have to let your eyes adjust a lot. Um, and uh, luckily for us, I have what I'd like to think is a pretty cool camera on my phone. I have the Google Pixel 4 and it's got this sweet night sight mode and I know a lot of cameras have things like phone cameras have things like this now. Um, so we are gonna take a whole bunch of cool pictures and I'll put them into this video right now. All right. Yeah, so we opened the aperture and a, something a little bit bigger than the diameter of pen seemed to be about perfect because things were still in focus, but also it let in a little bit more light so things were a little bit more visible in the room. Then we opened it up even more and now you can really see the stuff on the wall, but the issue is now it's kind of out of focus. That, that aperture is not tight enough to, to keep the image focused um on the walls but uh so crib why is the sky on the floor yes uh yeah so the sky is on the floor and the ground is on the ceiling because of the phenomenon of the way uh cameras work the way apertures work and light right light is hitting everything outside light from the sun is just hitting everything but light only travels in a straight line so if light hits say a uh, blade of grass on the ground, it's bouncing back and it's bouncing everywhere, but our aperture limits only that piece of grass, the light from the grass in a straight line from right there. And so uh, that light hits the grass, it bounces straight up and it hits the ceiling. The light from the trees over there are hitting the trees and that little one little line of light is going through the aperture into the trees on the wall. The light from the clouds in the sky is bouncing down through our aperture and onto the, the floor and the wall. So you get an inversion. The whole image uh, is inverted in the, in the walls of the room. And now even my camera is having a hard time focusing on all this because this is weird light for modern cameras. It's okay light for this camera though. Well, hope you've all enjoyed this. Hope you enjoy some of the cool and silly photos we took. And um, if you make a camera obscura of your own, show us the pictures that you get. Tell us your tips and tricks and the things that you found worked and didn't work. Um, oh, it's me in the clouds, upside down. Um, and share them with us on Facebook, New England Base Camp, on Instagram. Um, send us stuff, whatever you want to do. Um, but let us know if you've done this before, what it, how it turns out. Let us know if you have a more interesting yard than we do. Ours is kind of boring, but maybe you have something really cool out your window that you can take a picture of in a giant room. Um, all right. Again, I'm Kira LaFoss Baker. I am one of the educators at New England Base Camp, and I hope that you've enjoyed this um, foray into art and science combined to make a really cool experiment with some simple tools you got around the house. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.